We're going to work straight out from the head, just like this. When we bring everything out, it's gonna come back and we're gonna have a square or balanced line here. So we're gonna work vertically and bring everything traveling straight out to that. We take our line first, vertical section, bring that hair straight. Now I'm gonna continue over. I'm gonna grab a section right next to it and I'm gonna pull that previously cut section halfway over from where it lives to the new section. So they'll both kind of meet in the middle. And same thing again, vertical section. I'll grab half of what I just cut. Always combing the guide to the new hair. Now be aware of this elevation here, right? Because if I drop it, even the slightest bit, I'm gonna get a really heavy roundness to this haircut because the head is moving away right here, right? So you've gotta be really aware of what the head shape is doing with your line that you're creating. Cross check. Looks crazy, right? It's okay, it's okay. Today we're having a little fun with shape, but um, it will all come together in the end. Have a little faith in me, okay? Um, the question that happens every time is how do you know where's your guide to match up both sides? They don't have to be exactly the same length, but they gotta be pretty close, right? So I do wanna make sure once I cut it that they are similar in length. So now I can kind of determine, I just really need to take about a quarter of an inch off of there. This, cut a little bit more, that, and then I will check. These two. Comb the previous section halfway to the new section. Make sure you can see that guide clean through. Another one, half of the old. Now we're gonna comb out the front and we're gonna work the top. And the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take a center parting. This is a great trick when you want to connect two sides together. So we are going to cut our first section, grab pieces from that previously cut section, and I'm just going to come across and cut just like this to create a guideline. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side to get our guide. And this line is gonna be straight across on the head, just like this, out. What that's gonna do is once I'm coming out here, it's gonna build length in the front of the head shape here. When you have a line here, shortest point is at the apex, right? This is the shortest point to the comb. And now everything that happens past that apex, it's curving down. So the hair is getting longer towards the fringe. So because of that, I'll get a little bit longer fringe area. I'm gonna work uh, horizontal sections through it all the way through the head shape. Uh, and I'm going to work this way because I want to work, I want to be cutting interior to exterior. Just like that. And there's my line. Now, don't get in a hurry and cut all this and be satisfied because it's all bunched up in my finger here. My fingers are not this long. So you gotta recomb and reposition your hand to continue that line forward. Grab that middle section. Theme of the cut though, it's gonna travel over. So I comb my previous section halfway to the new section. And that's where I cut. Hair's bunched up here. So recomb. Cut. That last comb I'm actually pulling towards me because I wanna keep this shape straight up in the air. That's the line that I cut with the guide at the beginning, so here as well. So I don't wanna tilt into this edge as I travel the guide around. I'm not trying to really create a round shape, a fully round shape. The head shape's gonna do that on its own. So cutting it to have a little bit more of a square effect to the layering 
will uh, give it a more a little collapsed and then bubble instead of just a big bubble. We got all these layers, which are gonna look really cool when it's all finished out. And then you've got this long fringe. The crown, what I wanna do is I wanna go concave layer. So right here, we're going to work a concave shape just like this out so it'll scoop out with the layer. I'm gonna connect it to this top piece and then from that we're gonna build out this scooped concave layer. So vertical section. Oh and we're also gonna pivot on this one so it's gonna be a round shape. Here's my guide here and we'll cut short long vertical section. Now comb that hair over towards the new section. Lift up, lift along. It's been fun. The way you know you're on the wrong side is if your elbow is hitting the head. So you always want to make sure that your fingertips are pointing towards the head, and then you'll be able to cut those concave layers. So, um, so here, fingers pointing towards the head. It's a pivot with your elbow, and you're good to go. There we go. Now I'm pulling towards myself. Carry that old hair, old section for the guide over to the new section. The disconnection that's under this, as of right now, is holding a lot of weight. So having this disconnect underneath the bottom will actually hold some of that density in the length, which will be beneficial to us later in the cut. So you can see how it fills it out a little bit. So right now we got a crazy looking cut, right? But we're gonna finish it out. We're gonna do a bunch of dry cutting and turn this into something awesome. Don't you worry about it. So there's a lot of softening that we're gonna do in here. We're gonna go in and cut into the fringe like this, round this off um, and really play with that interior shape that we have. The reason it works so well to cut it across the top like we did and then go in and put the fringe is because when you're holding the hair up here and cutting it and layering it, when you're layering this, this hair is being brought way beyond 90 degrees, right? Oh, it's focusing on this face. I was like, what is it looking at? When we look at it, this 90 degrees, right? Out from this point, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. So if I'm working a straight line across, this part that would be 90 degrees is now being popped up here. So this is zero, right? This is 180 up here. So we're kind of a little bit like a 125, right? Um, which those numbers don't really matter, but what it means is 90 is already layering. Above 90 is really kind of collapsing and making this line, or making this nice and soft. So if it's nice and soft and not dense here, cutting this blunt line is a lot easier. So now what I'm gonna do is I wanna determine the length that I want this fringe. And once I get it put into my comb, I use a wider tooth comb. This is the Delren uh, 705 comb. And that's a little crooked, that's okay. Here we go. This is the FSE Precision Pro six inch. I like six, six and a half inch for this technique because you can reach a little bit further. Kind of actually liking the way that corner is. I'm just gonna etch into it a little bit. Finish up this corner. Little trick here is to make sure you do not go into the hairline over here. So look at that already, ta-da. Looked ridiculous and now all of a sudden it's looking like a haircut. So this is the six inch scissor, and then that was for the fringe. Now I move into um, either the five and a half uh, Precision Pro or Elite. So here is the Pro Focus or the Elite. There we go. So now I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna work some texture into this haircut. Now remember, we cut this vertical, but I'm gonna go in horizontally and just create some texture in this line. And I'm not changing anything that I cut, right? Everything's still coming straight up. 
but that little texture, see, it just softens it. Um, taking those lines and softening them through. And I never want to elevate this blunt line that I created. So we'll keep that, let this just kind of fall over and see how that blends in. Now we're going to put this scissor to work, texturizing scissor here. That is really cool, Matt. You like it? Yeah, when you first started cutting that first section, I was like, oh boy. <laughs> That's the point. I love it. Slide cutting through, just melting them in. A little spray in here. What do we think? We like it? 